Um, it is now 6.06, .06 and Mr. Butler, if you would share your screen, I'm going to call our meeting to order. Thank you so much. Um, make sure I do have... All right, so you see before you the uh, meeting agenda for August 23rd, 2023. Are there any corrections, updates, or yeah, additions to the meeting agenda? All righty. Uh, if there are no objections, can we, uh, by unanimous consent, agree to the meeting agenda as distributed for August 23rd, 2023? Hearing none, the meeting agenda is now approved as distributed. Um, next on our agenda is the review and approval of the meeting minutes from July 23rd, 2023. Are there any corrections, updates, or deletions to the meeting minutes? All right, hearing none, can we by unanimous, unanimous consent, if there are no objections, Approve the meeting minutes for July 26, 2023. Hearing none, the meeting minutes are now approved. Uh, item number four, discuss follow-up matters from our prior meeting. Uh, report on the on the SWAS items presented at the July. Shouldn't that be August? That's one that I did not catch. Yes, that should have been August. Okay, so can yeah. we go? Okay, let's go back to our uh, re uh, review and number, approval number of two. the yeah. tw August 23rd, 2023 meeting agenda. Now with the correction of 4A, August 2023 Board of Education meeting. Are there any objections to the correction of the date? for 4A. Hearing none, can we by unanimous consent uh, with the noted correction, agree to the, again, uh, agree to the meeting minutes as corrected if there are no objections. Hearing none, the meeting agenda is now corrected um, with the noted correction. So we will start at our 4 a 4 a yeah. Yeah, and, and my apologies on that. I, I Like I was saying, I caught the uh, 823 and item number two and the 726 and item number three this morning. Completely missed uh, July in item 4A. Um, so uh, there were five items that were taken to the, uh, the August meeting. Uh, let me turn my camera on. There were five items that were taken to the August meeting, four change orders in a contract approval. The first item uh, was a change order for Redan Middle School, change order number one to uh, construction works, and that was for district requested HVAC controls and material escalations to construction works for $228,271.47. Uh, item number or the, the second change order was for E.L. Miller Elementary School, change order number one. Uh, again, it was district requested items and material escalations to Centennial contractors for $240. Uh, I'm sorry, $240,291.42. And I'll get into each one of these uh, after I go through them. Uh, third. Change order was for Salem Middle School uh, for HVAC controls and material escalations uh, for $230,238.37. Uh, the fourth item, fourth change order was for Farrington Elementary School HVAC controls and material escalation 
to construction works for $121,801.93. And the fifth item was a uh, contract award uh, for architectural and engineering services for Druid Hills High School Modernization. Uh, went to a, a company, uh, MSSA and PBK. It's a, a joint venture between two firms. It's a uh, for three hundred fifty thousand dollars and in item in uh, number five. I'll go over that a little bit more. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention on all four of these change orders, uh, what we had there, we are looking at um, upgrading or the need to upgrade our HVAC controls in a number of uh, buildings uh, throughout the district. And there's a, a separate project that we're working on for HVAC controls uh, where a company will come in and just do controls at a number of buildings. And bas basically the controls right now in, in a lot of the older buildings are still hydraulic controls. They're an, an older system. Uh, and what we're replacing those with is an, a, an electronic type. Um, so what we did on these projects, since these are HVAC projects, we went ahead and added the new controls uh, system, the scope for that work to these contracts. So we don't install new air conditioning systems without updated controls. Um, and then there was also a, um, uh, there was some material escalation uh, on each of these also where uh, because of the the date between when the um, uh, when the contract uh, or when the contractor had given us the the original bid and when the um, uh, the contracts were finally executed and the project started, uh, there had been increases from some of the material supply companies. So that's that's what each of those four uh, change orders are for. Um, would you like me to roll right into number five to talk about the one um, contract that we had? Yes, please. Okay, so um, this is a um, this is a a little bit different of a contract than what we would normally do. Uh, if you look at the contract award spreadsheet, so first off, this is for a SPLA six project. This is for the Druid Hills High School Modernization Project. Uh, we had 48 uh, people attend a pre-conference. Uh, we had 10 proposals re received. Now, the contract amount for this is only $350,000. And I say only three hundred fifty dollars because the way this is going to be, uh, this project is going to be broken up, what this initial phase is for, this is phase one, is the development of a modernization report a site utilization study and a conceptual design or actually conceptual design options for Druid Hills High School. Uh, from that, we will be able to develop a, uh, a budget uh, or I guess an estimate, actually an estimate for uh, the construction of the project. And then we'll be able to, uh, once we know what that scope is, we'll then be able to proceed with the remainder of the design uh, so we'll get a full design and a price for that in the future. So this is just a preliminary uh, part to develop a, like I said, the modernization report, site utilization study, and a conceptual design. Basically what their architect is going to do, they're going to come in, they're going to look at the existing facility. They're going to tell us um, in the modernization report what systems need to be replaced. Uh, they're going to look at the site. Uh, because as y'all know, and as uh, I'm sure you've heard, the Druid Hills High School site is a very tight site, uh, very hard to get to um, parts of it, especially the back. Uh, so they're going to do a site utilization study, um, and then they're going to do a preliminary design uh, for us also. Um, and then uh, we'll, once that is done, we'll be able to proceed with the uh, full design of the project. So that is item four and item five on the agenda. Any questions? Okay. All right, moving right along. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, let's see, six, review of community feedback collected from the East Block uh, Committee email address.
Daniel. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry, I had to get off mute. Um, we had a number of emails um, that have uh, come since our last meeting. Um, first email was from uh, Nancy Kelly. Um, there was, um, well, um, a complaint about the email address, but um, that has uh, since been addressed. Um, and she also had um, another question about um, the April 2023 uh, MSR. And I believe, uh, Richard, you did uh, address uh, those questions in, an, in another email. Uh, there was an email from, let's see. That Daniel, would be, oh, yes. Did, did you want me to go over the response to that? Because that was actually the email, that April uh, email was the one that Ms. Kelly um, had sent in that we didn't receive. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, no, um, no, we're not going to, we're not going to do that here. The okay, response okay. Was, was sent. Um, so she has the information that she needs. So we're going to move on. Okay. All right. Uh, another email that was received from, I believe this is uh, Rhonda Johnson about uh, the East Blast financial reporting. Um, let's see. Uh, she noticed that um, the community page where the audits and reports were published had been removed from the, uh, the Camp County School District website. Um, like I just happened to uh, see this when I forwarded that on to you, Madam Chair, and, and to Richard, uh, because it was actually addressed to the chair and vice chair directly. Uh, there was another email uh, that we received from uh, Kirk Lund about our work order updates. Uh, let's see, a uh, question about uh, when no one ever asked about uh, data on a regional level, which I'm sure we have, but let's see. So yeah, asking about um, having uh, the level of uh, detail with work order um, updates, but I believe Richard, you uh, replied to that one as well. Let's see. And I'll double check, Daniel, if not, I'll reply to uh, all of those. Let's see. Okay, thank you, let's see. Um... Another email from Nancy Kelly uh, regarding MSR reviews and data dashboards. Um, and where Ms. Kelly acknowledges that she had the uh, wrong email address. Uh, let's see. And the last email was received Monday about the lag in posting the July 2023 uh, MSR. So that is all the correspondence that uh, we've re received, well, electronic correspondence we've received since the last meeting. Okay, I'll, I will uh, look at each of those and respond uh, to those. Or Okay, thank you, Richard. All righty. Um, thanks, Daniel. Yes, ma'am. We want to go back to the agenda. Thanks, Mel. All righty, we are now at seven, the MSR review. Mel? Thank you, Kathy. Good evening, folks. Um, we do have a, a regular presentation to share with the committee. Um, 
I wonder if uh, if I may take the privilege and ask the Mr. Hofstetter if he he prefer that I walk the committee through the proposed new monthly report. Uh, the contents are embedded in this presentation, but if you would like me to do that, we can. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that's fine. And I just want to remind everyone that we are now switching over uh, to a new format for our, our monthly financial reports with a quarterly status report. Uh, this coming month will be the first month that we release that, which also notes why there's a little bit of lag in time uh, because we will not be posting a monthly status report for this month. Thank you, Eric. I'll do that. Um, yeah. So we've prepared this report a few months running, um, and it has some advantages that we'd like to share with you quickly. Uh, first and foremost, the we'll note that the table of contents is fairly condensed. We think uh, more concise is good. And part one of the report, or section one, is the executive summary that we prepare each month for Mr. Hofstetter, the superintendent and the East Bloss committee, uh, sending that directly to the chair and vice chair. The contents of this section are included in my normal presentation, so we'll return to that momentarily. Section two of the report includes a funding recap for SPLOS five, a funding, a funding recap for SPLOS six, excuse me, as well as a table for commitments and expenditures. And you may recognize these tables as essentially holdovers from the previous monthly status report. Uh, we believe they provide valuable information and don't want to change just for change's sake. More importantly, the project budget and cost reporting, starting with table four, is now derived directly from the district's MUNIS financial system. So there's no need to interpret anything that comes out of the program management information system. You remember, remember that was called ProLiance. This report is directly from the district's financial system, MUNIS. And as we've said previously, MUNIS is the system of record for the district. So this represents the facts as they stand uh, officially. Um, project numbers obviously are the same. ProLiance mimic the project numbers from MUNIS. So there's no change in the key for the report. But we're happy to make this transition because it pretty much provides for one-stop shopping for the information on budgets and expenses. That's the current total as reported officially at the end of July from MUNIS. Table five provides that same sort of report for East Bloss six. Um, you'll note that most of the information is not yet populated that's a function of timing and uh, our coordination with finance. Those projects that have been officially approved by the board and expenditures have occurred are shown pretty much all the way down. So there are some technology, some program management, and some DCSD staff expenses. And of course, as the data is input into MUNIS based on actual transactions, they'll be reflected in the actual MUNIS report. So that's law six. Um, I mentioned concise. That's effectively the content of the monthly financial report as dictated by the district. And we're happy to share that with this team. Uh, with that, I'll move over to our regular presentation to provide all the status information that, as they used to say, is fit to print. Starting with our Major achievements for the month, we like to call them. You'll note that no projects were advertised for AE or builder services in July, and no contracts were awarded for AE services in July. We did have one contract awarded for builder services. That's for East Bloss 6 Project 21836. That's the new Dresden Elementary School, and that was awarded to Winter Construction Company using the construction manager at risk delivery method. In terms of our active procurements for East Bloss 5, Hawthorne Elementary HVA system replacement is scheduled for an August board approval. Obviously, we know the outcome of, of that since the August board is behind us. We'll have to report that activity in our next 
uh, meeting for Midvale Elementary, also a major building system replacement that's scheduled for September 2023, approval of the general contractor contract. For DeKalb High School Tech South, that's an HVAC plumbing, um, lighting and site improvements project. Board approval is anticipated in September for the general, con general contractor. For our fire, fire sprinkler A, that includes Dunair Elementary and Wadsworth Elementary, that's slated for September board approval. Columbia High School and ISC International Student Center were removed from this group because those projects, we've got an East Law 6 project in the pipeline or in planning, and we think it's more efficient to, quote, impact the school one time when we're doing that work. Similarly, for Fire Sprinkler Group B, all good elementary and Kittredge, Mat Kittredge Magnet have been removed from that group based on an upcoming East Law 6 project. The award for general contractor services for that group B, including Brockett, Evansdale, Stone Mill, Stone Mountain Elementary, and Margaret Harris Comprehensive Center, um, again, slated for October approval. Fire sprinkler group C, which includes Huntley Hills Elementary, Vanderlyn, and Woodward Elementaries, along with Montgomery Middle School, is slated for September board approval. At Henderson Mill Elementary, the scope of work includes roof replacement, plumbing, and HVAC component replacement. We're hoping for an October board approval. And recently, the district has asked us to work with the architect to get a proposal to add a security vestibule to that project. For Briar Vista Elementary, which includes a roof replacement, security vestibule, and some accessibility improvements, we hope to get board approval for contractor services in October. And we're asked to get a proposal from the architect to add a new fire alarm system. Our Livesey Elementary HVAC replacement project you may recall from a prior meeting, the contract was awarded to Cross Architects, and the contract is in the process of being executed. Continuous Floss 5, our Lower Ridge, Woodbridge, Chestnut Elementary, and Druid Hills Middle School bundle. Uh, it's a major building system replacement. was scheduled for approval in August. Um, again, we'll have an update on that next month, we expect. And for Kingsley Elementary, which is a major building system replacement focusing on HVAC, um, we hope to restart design um, with that original scope as soon as or pending the approval uh, by the board of some East Bloss 5 budget adjustments. In terms of next action for items that were kind of in limbo, the Clarkson High School project will be rebid at some point based on the district's direction. Same for the Nancy Creek facility. Uh, parking additions, paving group B, we plan to rebid in the winter of uh, 2023 with plans to complete that work by summer 2023. And Champion Middle School, uh, we've completed a new scope detail process. Uh, that means there may be, or ex we expect to be able to add much needed scope to that project and we're working now to determine the right way to get that priced because we do have a uh, design already started. In terms of our status of our active construction projects, uh, you know that the Cedar Grove High School Auditorium project is complete, I'm sorry, and we're wrapping up the punch list and trying to close out project documentation and then financial closeout. At Hamburg Elementary, the fire sprinkler work is substantially complete and the punch list work is ongoing. And at Freedom Middle School, uh, you, you may remember we reported the security vestibule complete a month ago, and the new door into the reception area that was requested by the school is complete. Continuing on with active construction projects for our Kittredge Magnet Gym HVAC, uh, the equipment delivery was confirmed for August, and Georgia Power will be installing new service to the main panel board for the, for the school. At our Druid Hills High School, which is at Druid Hills Middle, and Redan High School baseball effort, um, the Redan High School work is substantially complete. The school has requested some additional items, and we're processing that request uh, for the district's approval. At E.L. Miller Elementary, 
flooring painting, new walls and mill work is ongoing. The HVAC work, we hope to start in August. Uh, that depends on the portable classroom modules being ready to accept students so we can work in the existing building uh, wing by wing is the plan. At Farrington Elementary, the repaving work is complete. We expect to start the HVCA work uh, this winter. That's just a function of equipment deliveries. At Salem Middle, the re-roofing work is about 67% complete at the end of July. We also expect to start that HVAC work this winter, of course, depending on the equipment deliveries. And at Reed Ann Middle, the plumbing fixture work is complete. We're happy to report. And renovation to the restrooms is being coordinated with the school uh, to start this fall. That is to say, we would ask to take out a bank of restrooms, get that done at a time, and then reopen that bank of restrooms so we can take out another bank of restrooms uh, to get through the work and not have to wait till summer. At Security Vestibule Group B, all work is complete except for, um, at the end of July, the Cabaroli College Academy and Elizabeth Andrews High School over at AIC. Uh, spoiler alert, that work did start and most of the ballistic resistant, resistant glazing is installed and we hope to have the storefront complete and we're waiting on the doors as of right now. So that's making good progress. In terms of SPLOS 5 projects in design, uh, Tony Elementary, uh, HVAC work, uh, construction documents are essentially complete. At Rock Chapel Elementary, the schematic design work is active. At Stoneview Elementary, we've completed our scope detail process, process walkthroughs, and we're working to confirm the additional scope of work uh, with the district uh, for the architect's release. And at Kingsley, uh, we, I think, mentioned we want to start restart that design with uh, the original scope uh, pending the upcoming SPLOS 5 budget adjustment. In terms of new major projects, we like to call them Cross Keys High School Addition and Modernization. We're happy to report that the space program is confirmed and sch schematic design is, is active. That's a SPLOS 5 project by way of reminder. And the new Sequoia High School Middle School is going along nicely, we think. The space program has been confirmed. The schematic design is active. Uh, the construction manager risk contract was awarded in June and the the CMAR was a part of our last coordination meeting. Um, so we think we're off to a good start there. That's uh, East Floss 6 project, by the way. Continuing with East Floss 6, regarding our new Dredson Elementary, that space program is confirmed and we're a little further along in schematic design there. And for the Druid Hills High School Phase 1 modernization, uh, Richard reported earlier that the contract for the Phase 1 AE has been awarded by the board at its uh, August 14th meeting. And Cross Keys High School Middle School, I'm sorry, the new Cross Keys Middle School is uh, future, uh, depending on uh, land purchase as of right now. In terms of planning for East Law 6, um, we've been asked to push the design bill procurements for the roofing projects up to September, October, and they'll fall right behind the intense workload that the procurement team is involved with for the current East Bloss 5 projects. I just described um, a number of ESSER projects and the East Bloss 6 HVAC projects we'll talk about momentarily. Um, scoping meetings are complete for the HVAC projects at Idlewood and Ashford Park elementaries. And we expect a AE procurement to follow on this fall. Uh, Midway, Murphy Candler, and all good elementaries will be the next HVAC projects that we push forward. In terms of, again, planning for SPLA 6, uh, regarding the other big bundle of security vestibules, fire alarm, HVAC controls upgrades, recall they were all lumped in as safety security in this approved SPLA 6 project list. Uh, the, C the CIP team is investigating adding these scopes to current East Bloss projects where budget allows. That gets us to delivering those at least a year plus sooner than they would if we had to wait till SPLA 6. As far as security vestibules are concerned, that includes Rock Chapel, Livesey, Tony, Stoneview, Kingsley, Henderson Mill ES, as well as Champion Middle School. 
And as it relates to fire alarms, that would include projects we could possibly roll into Briar Vista, Henderson Mill, Hawthorne, Rock Chapel, Tony Chestnut, E.L. Miller, Laurel Ridge, Wood Ridge Elementaries, along with Salem Middle and the Nancy Creek facility. Note that fire alarm systems are already included in a number of those projects. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll be getting those done much sooner than had we waited for SPLOS 6 timing. Um, similar to our prior reports, we like to capture data from the tables in the MSR. In this case, it's the MFR, the monthly financial report. And we'll briefly review those tables we spun through previously. The tables 1 and 2 show that East Bloss 4 and 5 funding. Uh, you know that uh, as it relates to GISFIC or GADOE reimbursements, no change from July. We're still at a total of $85,829,878. And I'll spot you the two cents. Uh, for East Bloss 5, sales tax receipts finalized at $616.8 million. For East Bloss 6, sales tax receipts at the end of July were up to $152.5 million. And that represented a 12.8 million increase from prior month. And that puts us about 5.7 million above the plan, which was 145.4 million. And a little bit down from our overage last month, but still trending nicely above the forecast. In terms of table three from the MFR, which, so, which uh, summarized expenditures uh, for East Bloss 5, the MUNIS reports show Total expenditures of four hundred point two million, and that's about sixty three and a half percent of the current budget of six hundred thirty point three million. And for East Bloss six, total expenses at the end of July were about two point six million, um, and that's a point four percent of the current budget of seven hundred million. Table four showed you the cost performance, if you recall, and all the East Bloss five construction projects look good. Uh, there's one non-construction project that's reporting expenses exceeding current budget. Actually, this has been noted before. That's Project 40235, the uh, Technology ERP Finance HR System Upgrade Project. For East Bloss 6 cost performance, all the projects on that table uh, look good for accounts or projects, interchangeable terms. Um, in terms of schedule delays, no new delays reported in July, and I would ask to you refer back to the old MSR Table 12 for the listing of the previously reported delays. Uh, no claims, meaning requests for compensation uh, by any AEs or builders this period. That would be outside of the normal uh, pay application process. Um, and a quick recap of our SPLOS 5 project status, out of the 68 total projects, you've got over 45 completed or in construction, and only 15 in construction procurement, and seven in design. So most of the portfolio is pretty well along uh, the railway here. Um, oh, we do have a few progress photos we want to share for the month. Um, this shows you some capital improvements at Yale Miller, uh, new kitchen equipment, which was sorely needed. And they, they seem really pleased to, to get it. Um, the right-hand photo is racks in a storage room, which don't seem that impressive, but understand that the prior arrangement had the, what's the best word, the ire of the fire marshal. Um, it was an, technically an unsafe condition, and these new racks are, are very welcome by by the staff and the kitchen team there. Uh, we did a number of exterior improvements uh, to manage uh, site storm sewer, uh, storm drainage. Um, we needed to improve accessibility on the property, and that was done in a couple places. And uh, that's a shot of new casework um, on the right-hand side, in which would be a, a, a science classroom. Oh, at Freedom Middle School, uh, this is a shot of the window that had to be removed and where we cut out the existing wall 
to put in the new door that was requested by the school. This is important because it allows, once you're in the school beyond the security vestibule, this allows staff to get into the reception area or the main office area without having to go back through the security vestibule and in the other entry. So it was reasonably important and it was a good ask. We're happy to do that for them. Um, and that's uh, that's it for our construction photos. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. All right, are there any questions from now in regards to the quarterly presentation? or any information that he's um, presented on. I don't have a question, Madam Chair, but I do want to uh, praise the team for a uh, much simpler and um, more compact um, summary. Well, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, as, as Mr. Hofstetter pointed out, we have produced and will continue to produce a quarterly status report that includes a, we call it a project page or a project status report for each project that's active, um, no matter actually, no matter what portfolio it's in. If it's funded by SPLOST, that project update page will be in the quarterly status report. If it's funded by, let's say, ESSER or CARES money, that project page will be in the quarterly status report. And if in fact it's, it's uh, general fund or small caps, um, that also will be in the quarterly status. So that report will be much longer, but it will have um, detailed status for each project, uh, kind of the way you saw the project status here today. So thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other comments or feedback or questions? All right, um, we're moving right along on our agenda. Uh, facilities maintenance uh, report, the work order report update. Hello everyone, and uh, again, thanks for tuning in. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can share my screen real quick. And we'll bring up the information. Okay, you should see a chart. I hope everyone can see it. I'm assuming everyone can. So yes, we can yes, see it. We can. Okay, great. Okay, <laughs> no worries. All right. So uh, just real quick on a on a quick recap here. So we opened up school obviously August seventh. Uh, hats off to our facilities maintenance team. They answered nearly 900 uh, work tickets that first week of school. Uh, obviously, we've had major challenges in that first week, uh, but overall, the school opened up um, very smoothly, as we all know. On uh, the first night, uh, or that being the night of August 7th, many of you are aware, we suffered a uh, some pretty good severe weather that came through, knocked out power to several of our schools, worked through the night, and all through the next day. On day two of our school, we had to relocate seven of our schools um, to other schools uh, as Georgia Power was still restoring um, energy and, and electricity back to those schools. Uh, and obviously on day three, we were able to have all schools back to normal. And since then, we've been in good shape. Uh, but between cutting trees and uh, keeping the air conditioners running and dealing with just uh, water and storm damage, uh, hats off to our team. And uh, I'm happy to state that they're still pushing forward. So just wanted to send uh, share that with everyone. Here you can just see by our trade shops, uh, the amount of work tickets that we're currently uh, pursuing and closing up. Again, this was a snapshot in time. Uh, by tomorrow, these numbers will continue to change as uh, some are closed out and new ones will come on. Uh, but here you can see that the bulk of our uh, uh, work tickets have been HVAC related. Uh, as you know, it's been over 100 degrees uh, for the last couple of weeks. And uh, just like I'm sure in your home, our air conditioners also struggle to keep up. So, but again, the team is uh, responding very quickly to keep those going and ordering parts and uh, and other repairs as as it necessitates. 
So all together right now, we're tracking just over 3,000 uh, work tickets. Um, you know, the bulk of those are under 30. Some of those that are over 30 days, again, it's either generally waiting on parts uh, and or equipment to catch up with us. So and that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, I would show you this by region, but I want to caution you that this will probably be the last time that we do this. Uh, with a current reorganization of the school system, we are no longer in uh, any kind of academic regions. Uh, they're now divided up by grade bands. So we'll be reporting these in a different way. And that might be something that we would uh, might ask this uh, advisory committee to help us with on what might be the best way to report that. Uh, but officially, uh, these re seven regions uh, currently no longer exist in the in the regional sense as it used to be. However, the schools still do. And uh, again, with that, if, uh, if I can answer any questions. Yep. Any questions for um, Eric in regards to the work order report? I think, Lisa, if you're on, I think you had a, a question last time that we had listed as a follow up in regards to positions, how they advertise. Yes, I was trying to just, uh, good evening, everyone. I was just trying to get an update on, you know, uh, hiring, retention, just general things like that. Uh, you know, ov overall, obviously, we're still advertising positions. Uh, some of our very difficult to find positions, those being generally HVAC related, uh, we're we're still uh, it's still been a challenge to to onboard and and recruit and attract and retain. Uh, I shouldn't say so much retain because overall we our retention rate has been pretty solid right now, uh, and uh, so we're we're continuing to look for for personnel, but we are augmenting our staff uh, through the use of local contractors in order to keep up. And we'll continue to do that until we can get to a place to where uh, uh, we can uh, we can continue to work and respond um, to our standards. Is there a general number of like, you know, what percentage of the positions are filled, what percentage are vacant, those type of things? Uh, yeah, we could probably get a vacancy report. Um, yeah, we, we, we can work on that for the next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Eric? Um, Madam Chair, I don't have a question, but I would. Uh, I do have a recommendation. Uh, since uh, uh, the superintendent wants to reorganize by grade ban. Uh, just seems to uh, make sense to uh, go ahead and um, reorganize the work order report um, based on um, the new uh, work structure. Yeah, and and we can look into that. Just so it's uh, kind of the new the new structure is that there's still seven regions or seven what we call now areas. Uh, three of those areas are divided just for elementary schools. Right. Uh, so you have one, two, and three. Area four is all the middle schools. Area five is all the high schools. So again, they're spread out completely across the, the uh, school district. Uh, area six are what we call horizon schools. So even though uh, there may be uh, a high school, if a high school is listed as a um, horizon school, and then that would fall under a different area at this time. And uh, Horizon schools generally are, are under um, uh, monitoring by the state and we have people working uh, to help improve the, uh, the, the student achievement there. Uh, so again, those schools, they can change every year. So you might have some come off the list and some go on the list. And then uh, our seventh area is what we call our special schools. Uh, these are facilities that are uh, pretend, uh, potentially these are charter schools. Um, or other specialized uh, schools and school programs. 
So um, we can report it that way. It's just there's a, 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 a there there could be some variability from time to time on that one. But we'll definitely uh, look at that as if that's an easier way to report. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions for Eric? All right, moving right along on our agenda. Thank Thanks, Eric. I think we missed some other things too. Um, not sure who on the of the, excuse me, who on our committee attended the uh, August Board of Education meeting? If you would just give us a synopsis of what, um, report on a synopsis, synopsis of the meeting. Okay, hearing nobody, I guess nobody attended. Um, if you have forgotten when you signed up to go, I don't have the information in front of me right now, uh, but we will make sure that, um, I believe it should be in our, I forgot which month that was that we decided when we were going to do this, I think it was back in the spring. So if you would refer to those minutes or if, yeah, I can't remember which month that was. Hey, Kathy, we'll we'll look and uh, we can okay. resend that. Okay, everyone. thank you so much, Richard. Sure. Um, but I think I think we went all the way. We signed up all the way to September. So, um, not sure who's supposed to go next month, but we'll need to do for October, November. Is there a December board meeting? I believe there is, but um, typically yes, we there, don't. There have generally a... is a board meeting scheduled in December. Yeah. Okay. Y yes, sir. It's listed for December 11th. All right. Thank you. So we'll need uh, someone to attend October, November, and December. And if we want to do January, then January uh, 2024 is fine as well. All right, um, number 10, uh, new business. I think this is old notification of upcoming community meetings and other events. Not sure if, um, if one, any information on that? No, sure. we don't have any. Okay. Um, 10B, not going to get up on my soapbox today. I've done it enough. So attendance per our bylaws is explicit. Um, number 11. Uh, unfinished business update on the bylaws. Daniel. All right. Um, I sent an email to um, the bylaws subcommittee um, asking for um, best dates and times to meet uh, based on the feedback. I uh, scheduled a meeting for uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, the 29th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. So um, hopefully you've all uh, received an invitation. If not, uh, please let me know and I will resend it. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Madam Chair, if I may. Mm -hmm. hey, mm -hmm. wait, wait, Absolutely. Wait. What day did you send it out, Daniel? I just want to think. I hadn't seen it, but then I may have overlooked it. I uh, sent the invitation um, today. Uh, let me find the exact. So let's see. It was sent at uh, five thirty-seven today. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. No problem. Again, if you have uh, if you didn't receive it, uh, let me know and I'll resend it. Okay, and that was explicitly for um, Kevin and Hillary. I'm not sure if Hillary's still on, but yeah, she's still on. Um, yes. If you didn't, 
Okay, if you didn't receive the invitation, please let um, Mr. Vice Chair know so that he can resend it. Okay. All right, awesome. All right, moving right along on our agenda. Mel, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, let's see, collect number 12, collection of recommendations from our meeting and follow-up matters. Um, what I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, a vacancy report for yep. open positions. And recommendation to um, for the work order report is to go by the the new district. I'm not sure what you call it. Banding by grade. Um, yeah, we we just call them areas. Okay. Yep. At this time. Okay. And I don't know if anybody heard anything else. That's, those are the two items that I heard. So the other one, uh, or actually two items. One, I guess we would should do every month, reply to the emails. And then I was going to look for the list of who was going to attend each of the uh, board meetings, which committee member was going to attend to each of the uh, board meetings, and resend that out to everybody. Uh, actually, I have that right You found it? Here. Okay. I found it. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, April it was Kevin Alexander. May, uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? Um, no, I'll put it in the chat. Go, yeah, we just need to no, we just need to know who was signed up for August and September. Let's see, um, let me check the March. Uh, the April minutes looks like uh, it was um, I think it was Robert who was slated for August. Okay. I'm not sure if is he still on. Robert, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you can you go to who's for September? I'm sorry, Daniel. Uh, let me check the April minutes. I don't I don't see him in the uh, March minutes. Let me check the April minutes. Okay. Um, Robert, can you go to the October yeah October meeting? Yes, I can plan for that. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, and I think that was the other item that we needed to do as well. Follow up on, we need to assign committee members to go to the October, November, and December, and possibly January board meeting. So hearing now, we'll make sure that that gets on our agenda for next month so we can get those signed up. Um, let's see, any announcements? Number 13. Any announcements from anybody? All right, hearing none. Um, our September meeting is scheduled for September 27th, 2023. Please put it on your calendars for 6 p.m. Information will be sent out to you. Um, if you have any questions, um, please let myself or Daniel know, and we will see you next month. Um, please continue to be safe. There is another variant of COVID out there, and it's a little bit more stringent than uh, Delta. So please continue to be safe and we will see you next month. Thank you so much.